Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I'm going to give you guys my projected 53-man roster for the New York Jets. Oh my god, does Joe Douglas have a lot of hard decisions to make? I had to make a lot of hard cuts figuring out how many, you know, positions were how many people were going to keep in this position and that position. Now, I'm not expecting this to be 100% accurate because there's going to be probably some trades that's going to happen today or tomorrow. It's going to lead up until the 53-man roster. Also, Joe Douglas is probably going to acquire people on the waiver wire so that's going to be adding to the 53 man roster eventually before week number one so there's a lot of outliers to be expected um when it comes to the jets 53 but in this video i want to give you guys my thoughts and my predicted uh 53 man roster so before we hop into it i just want to mention if you guys are new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button we got a lot of jets content coming your way leading up until the season of course and please do not forget to like the video if you guys enjoy and comment down below your thoughts of my 53 man roster and feel free to comment down below your predicted 53 man roster in the comments section with that being said let's dive right into it we're going to go position by position and we're going to talk about some players that can also make the practice squad so we're going to start off with the quarterbacks um this one we got zach wilson joe flacco and mike white as the three quarterbacks entering week number one yes that means chris streveler is a uh, cut very unfortunate chris streveler had probably the best preseason <laughs> i've ever seen from a quarterback at ever i mean for the new york jets i mean three straight games um come from behind victories but i just don't see them uh, moving on from mike white i really know that everyone in the comments is going to be upset with this they want chris trevler to make the team and i understand that i hear you guys but mike white has a lot of experience with the system we saw him last year in his first career start 400 yards uh against the cincinnati Bengals, and i feel like the jets are really going to prioritize mike white's experience in this system over uh, Chris Streveler. And I'm hoping that we can get Chris Streveler on the practice squad in case any injuries happen uh, to the quarterback position and we can move Chris Streveler up to be the backup role throughout the season. So I think that Chris Streveler could clear waivers unless there's a team out there that really wants quarterback depth and they're going to uh, claim uh, Chris Streveler. So that's really the three quarterbacks, Zach Wilson, Joe Flacco, Mike White. Moving into the running backs. Now this was tough. Um, I have the New York Jets coming in with three running backs. Brees Hall, Michael Carter, and Tevin Coleman. Now, this means that the Jets have cut Nick Bowden, the fullback. They've cut Ty Johnson. They've cut Bam Knight. They've cut LaMichael Pirine. They've cut a lot of players. But the guys that I think can make the practice squad are guys like Bam Knight, for sure, and Ty Johnson. Now, I don't know if Ty Johnson is going to be able to make the practice squad because he could be a hot commodity on the waiver wire. And I know that a lot of Jets fans want Bam Knight to make the roster, but I do think that the Jets are going to prioritize the experience of Tevin Coleman in the system over the young guy that has a lot of potential in Bam Knight. I would absolutely love if Bam Knight could be on the practice squad because he has a lot of potential in this league. That also means that the Jets are cutting their 2020 draft pick in LaMichael Pirine. Uh, which is he's just been disappointing since we drafted him didn't really fit the system at, at first because he was drafted for the Adam Gase system so we get to go into the season with three running backs even though I'd prefer to go in with four running backs so we can get Coleman and Bam Knight um, and another cut that's interesting I had to make is Nick Bowden because I know that this system requires a fullback but I just didn't see you know him uh, making the roster over some other guys to be honest now going into the wide receivers now this is where it gets interesting I got Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios, Jeff Smith, and yes, I got Denzel Mims. I'm predicting that Denzel Mims is going nowhere. I'm predicting that Denzel Mims will not be traded because it, to me, it feels like Denzel Mims wants to be traded, but the Jets do not want to trade Denzel. They value him in the franchise. Now, in Denzel Mims' perspective, that he doesn't feel like the Jets value him because they're not starting him, but they value him for depth and for the future of this team. You know, we have two years of control with Denzel on the roster. We saw what he did yesterday against the Giants, putting up seven receptions, 102 yards and a touchdown. And I'd prefer the Jets don't trade Denzel because I think that he could provide a big time impact this season if his name is called. If Corey Davis goes down with an injury, Denzel Mims is that guy to step up. If anybody else goes down with an injury, Denzel Mims is that guy to step up. Even if there's no injuries, you can still sub in Mims on certain packages if some guys are gassed. So I, I like the Jets going in with six receivers. Uh, this also means that the Jets have cut Calvin Jackson, Tariq Black, and those guys. When it comes to the practice squad, I would love to see Calvin Jackson make the practice squad as well. I feel like those two guys complement each other well in the practice squad. Calvin Jackson's more that uh, small five foot nine receiver that has a big frame at, at the same time, and he had those two game winning touchdowns. Irv is that guy that really looks like a player that could be, you know, a big body receiver for the Jets in the long run. Uh, now, getting into the tight ends, we got Tyler Conklin, CJ Uzama, Jeremy Ruckert. 
And Kenny Yaboa is the tight end that I see making the roster on top of these guys, which means the Jets move on from Lawrence Cager and Trevon Wesco. I'm hoping that we can stash uh, Lawrence Cager on the practice squad because he's been a huge bright spot for this Jets team uh, in the preseason. He's converted from wide receiver to tight end, but I do think that the Jets are going to value Kenny Yaboa because he's more of a prototypical tight end, even though I absolutely love Lawrence Cager and what he did. This was not easy, guys. It was not easy to make these decisions. I'd rather keep Lawrence Cager, but I do think that Kenny Yaboa is going to be that guy they're going to keep uh when it comes to the offensive line so the offensive tackle position we got george fent uh brown adoga and mitchell but and then they're going to place connor mcdermott probably on the injured reserve list since he is injured so that's going to come up with four offensive tackles they're going to cut uh cut grant hermans who could be on the practice squad and then the interior offensive line lincoln thomason connor mcgovern elijah Vera tucker nate herbig and dan feeney and then maybe on the practice squad we can get glazer and Pierce Backer as well. So those are the nine offensive linemen I see making the roster. I would think that Connor McGovern, uh, Connor McDermott, excuse me, would make the roster, but since he's injured, he could be a candidate to be on the injured reserve list or just cut him and then bring him back when he is healthy. Um, now going into the defensive line, starting off with the uh, interior D line, we got Quinn and Williams, Solomon Thomas, and Jonathan Marshall making the roster with Sheldon Rankin starting off on the pup list. So he's not going to uh, count against the 53 man roster because he's a little banged up right now. So maybe that'll make sense. And on the practice squad, uh, maybe Tanzel Smart and Nathan Shepard will make it. So those are the two guys, key guys that got cut in this um, hypothetical scenario. And then the defensive ends, we got Carl Lawson, John Franklin Myers, Michael Clemens, Jermaine Johnson, Jacob Martin, Vinny Curry and Bryce Huff all making the roster while cutting uh, Jabari Zuniga and Bradley Ine. Um, so I think those two guys are have a good option of making the uh, making the practice squad as well. Even though I do think that Bradley Ine could be a hot commodity on the waiver wire, he could get a claim somewhere else. Jabari Zuniga is a player that got cut last year and he was on the practice squad as well. So maybe uh, the Jets go that route again. And they go into the season with 10 total defensive linemen, 11 to be exact, if you include Sheldon Rankin, to be on the pup list. Uh, so listen, this, the defensive line is deep, and it was really hard to make these decisions because you want to see all these guys make the roster, make immediate impacts um, because we're so deep. And maybe some of these guys gets traded. Maybe Bryce Huff gets traded because he's uh, a good player and some, some teams around the league want him um, and the Jets can flip him for a pick. I don't know. Not saying I want to give up on Bryce Huff, but you never know. Joe Douglas is definitely going to be answering some calls, and he could be trading a bunch of these players for all we know. Now, when it comes to the linebackers, we're going to go into the season with four linebackers. CJ Mosey, Quan Alexander, Quincy Williams, and, and uh, Jamie and Sherwood. And that means the Jets have cut Hamza Nazaldine. Now, this was tough because he was you know, a draft pick last year, but I definitely feel like Jamie and Sherwood is miles ahead of Hamza Nazaldine in his development. It was hard to keep five linebackers in this scenario because there's a lot of other the positions that need um, more depth. If we can get Nazardine on the practice squad, I think that's going to be the case because I don't think another team is going to want to claim Nazardine, a guy that was drafted out of college who was a safety transitioning to linebacker. So I think the Jets will be confident if they're able to cut Nazardine and still sign him to the practice squad. Now the cornerbacks, we got Sauce, DJ Reed, Michael Carter II, Bryce Hall, Javelin Guidry, Brennan Eccles, and Justin Hardy. Seven total corners I got making the roster. Um, Isaiah Dunn has been cut. Wild Goose has been cut. Now this was tough because I we need to have, you know, if, this is the way I looked at it with this cornerback room. DJ Reed and Sauce are the two starters on the outside. Michael Carter II is the starter on in the slot. Now, who's going to be the backups on the outside? It's going to be Bryce Hall, and it's going to be Brandon Eccles. Who's going to be the backup behind Michael Carr the second in the slot? It's going to be Javelin Guidry. And you got to include Justin Hardy in this because he's the special team's ace. He's going nowhere. So that's why we, we came away with seven total cornerbacks. Unless the Jets want to cut Justin Hardy and then roll in with um, a different gunner, but I don't see them happen that happening. He's a special team's captain. He's a, a leader on this franchise, and I don't see them moving off from Justin Hardy. So that's why I think seven corners is, is possible. Maybe Isaiah Dunn makes the practice squad, even though he didn't really look too good in the preseason, but Isaiah Dunn definitely feels like he's going to get cut. The safety position. Now, this is interesting. Jordan Whitehead, LaMarcus Joyner, Jason Pinnock, and Will Parks is the fourth safety that I have making the roster, which means that Joe Douglas will be cutting his uh, own draft pick in Ashton Davis. Um, now, this is interesting because Ashton Davis, he's a guy that I had a lot of hopes for when we drafted him initially. And this also means that this 2020 draft class is just taking hits after hits after hits. Makai Becton being injured. We all know that. Denzel Mims requesting a trade. Jabar Zuniga being cut. LaMichael Piron being cut. Ashton Davis being cut. Braden Mann not looking like a, a really good uh, punter. 
James Morgan, we all know what happened with that. So the 2020 draft class is looking pretty terrible. But the good thing about that is Joe Douglas in the last two draft classes that made up for it and <laughs> a lot, big time. Elijah Moore, Michael Carter, Zach Wilson, ABT, you know, the list goes on and on. Michael Carter the second. And on this draft class, we all love so much. So the 2020 draft class, I'm just looking at it like, okay, that was terrible. But at least Joe Douglas can really uh, bounce back in the la in this uh, last two draft classes. And then to finish it off, the, this is the easy one, you know, special teams, punter, Braden Man, kicker, Greg Zerline, long snapper, Hennessy. So those are the 53 people I have making the roster. Let me know your thoughts down below about any players you think that I should have cut or shouldn't have cut because obviously you guys are going to disagree with some of these takes and that's totally okay. Let me know your thoughts down below in the description. That is it for this video, guys, and I'll catch you in my next one. Cannot wait to see what happens tomorrow. I'll be live to give you guys all the latest news. Catch you guys next time. Let's go Jets. Peace out.